In our pursuit to try to understand how the universe works, one of the biggest discoveries to date is in realizing that a lot of the answers in regards to the mysteries of the universe actually lie inside black holes. By trying to understand what happens inside black holes and how they function, we'll finally be able to answer a lot of questions in regards to how everything else in the universe works as well. This is something that a lot of scientists realized in the last few decades. And the reason for this is really simple. A lot of modern physics depends on what's known as the standard model of particle physics. In this model, pretty much everything around us can be explained through various interactions of various subatomic particles. The particle is governed by four primary forces. But there's always been a problem with this model. It does not explain gravity or the interactions of particles using gravity. And so for many decades now, the scientists have been trying to figure out where exactly does gravity fit in the standard model. And most of the scientists, if not all of the scientists, so they believe that the answers truly lie by understanding what happens inside black holes. And it looks like today we might have come a step closer to trying to figure all of this out. Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about a completely new and very accidental discovery of yet another property black holes seem to possess. A property that was discovered completely by accident while going through various really complex formula. And so let's talk a little bit more about all of this and what this might mean for the future of our understanding of everything around us. Starting with the idea that our understanding of black holes is really not that old just yet. As a matter of fact, up until Stephen Hawking and his original propositions that black holes have a lot of unusual properties, most people believe that these were just some unusual phenomena that might exist but might not exist at all. With one of the bigger discoveries back in 1974 being the mathematical realization that black holes most likely emit a little bit of temperature through what's known as Hawking radiation. This is the idea we've discussed in one of the many previous videos, but in short, this idea has been proven many times using analog black holes, such as the acoustic black holes or black holes relying on a lot of other principles. Although interestingly, the smaller the black hole, the more temperature it produces, so technically speaking, a really small black hole is actually going to be pretty hot. And so because of this, scientists started to realize that black holes do seem to possess various properties that are usually attributed to much less massive objects such as stars or planets. And this was quite surprising to many scientists, mostly because, mathematically, only three main properties should exist in black holes. They should all have mass, they should also have what's known as spin, which is essentially how fast the black hole itself is spinning, and lastly, they all have what's known as charge. But every other property, similar to a typical star such as the color, the luminosity, or even chemical composition, in this case would no longer exist. The black holes should only really have those three properties, with Stephen Hawking then adding the fourth property being the temperature. And this was actually from applying the quantum mechanics theory to the idea of black holes. The ideas from Albert Einstein do not talk about the idea of temperature at all. And so when combining the quantum mechanics with theory of relativity, this is when all of these other properties start to come out. And by combining these two theories, this is essentially how the scientists, how the physicists, are hoping one day we'll have the theory of everything, where we can actually explain the entire universe through a set of mathematical formula. And so that's basically where black holes come in and help us realize or help us study how all of this possibly works in the universe. But because today a lot of scientists are pretty certain Hawking was correct and black holes do have temperature, we can maybe start applying some of the other theories to this idea as well, and specifically ideas from the laws of thermodynamics. And although generally these laws are mostly used for things like liquids and gases, in theory they can be used for absolutely anything that seems to possess at least one of these properties, including things like temperature. And so, in the recent study that you can find in the description below, some of the scientists were essentially analyzing the idea of black holes by using some of the ideas from thermodynamics and specifically trying to figure out some of the unusual properties in regards to entropy of black holes. Although entropy by itself is sort of difficult to imagine and sort of difficult to understand, the main principle here is that, well, it's the idea behind the disorder of a system. And in black holes, this particular idea of disorder actually relates to the surface area of the event horizon. And so the two scientists from University of Sussex were essentially trying to combine the Einstein's equations with quantum theory and 
work out some of the problems in regards to entropy of black holes, which today in physics is done quite a lot in order to try to figure out if there's really any connection between the theories and if we can somehow find the theory of everything by combining some of the other physics into the physics of black holes. Although quick side note, what it makes black holes so special? Well, it's actually the so-called singularity on the inside. This is the point of infinity. And today we know that when it comes to detecting infinity anywhere in physics, it usually just means that we don't really understand the concept or that our math in that point breaks down completely. We need new math or we need new theories. Which means black holes are most likely a perfect case study in order to understand what is it that we don't understand about the universe. Which of course means that the actual singularity in this case is just something misunderstood and not really yet described. The actual insides of a black hole are very likely entirely different. And so the scientists today are hoping to actually figure out what exactly happens past the event horizon. But while doing a lot of these calculations, the two scientists behind the study kept discovering some sort of an unusual feature that they really didn't understand. Something in their formula was not really adding up. Or to be more exact, something else was appearing in their formula that they didn't really understand just yet. But then a few months ago, they had a sudden revelation. They realized it seems to represent pressure. The type of pressure that usually exists in a typical thermodynamic system. And although it was a very, very small amount of pressure, it was nevertheless there. And it actually made a lot of sense. If the black hole has temperature, in terms of thermodynamics, it should definitely also have pressure as well. And here we're not talking about any kind of a gravitational pressure or anything related to gravity. In this case, it's the pressure also generated by the same principles from quantum mechanics. Although, interestingly enough, the value for this pressure was actually negative. And this suggested one thing. It suggested that over time, a typical black hole should be slowly shrinking. Something that a lot of scientists speculated about before, but something that was not proven until this particular study. And the fact that this was discovered completely by accident, and the fact that this is actually a complete surprise as well, make this particular study exceptionally interesting. But here the question was, okay, but how much pressure? I mean, it's not a lot, but how much is not a lot? What exactly is the pressure of a typical solar mass black hole? In this case, a black hole that's essentially one solar mass, or technically would represent one of the smallest black holes out there. Well, in this particular case, the pressure is extremely low. It's 0 0.460s two bar. And okay, just for comparison, according to NASA, the surface pressure, atmospheric pressure on the moon, and that's of course something we would sometimes refer to as vacuum, is like trillions and trillions and trillions of times more. And so the actual pressure is absolutely minuscule. But just like with the temperature, this particular pressure very likely increases quite dramatically as the black holes becomes smaller and smaller which also probably causes this particular black hole to shrink faster and faster as it loses its mass. But all of this is of course very theoretical for now, and technically speaking, unless we use analog black holes using, for example, acoustic waves or waves in water, we're not going to be able to actually determine any of this just yet. And also here we're also assuming that the black hole itself is not really growing and not absorbing any more mass and does not obviously have an accretion disk around itself. So in this case, this would be an empty black hole, completely by itself, very likely sometimes in distant future, where a lot of the black holes are basically just stuck by themselves, and there's not much mass or gas going around for all of these black holes to consume. And so in this case, the black hole will start emitting temperature, and will also start slowly shrinking because of the pressure. And the smaller the black hole, the more emissions it will get. Which is actually kind of interesting. It means that if there's mass around, the black holes will grow in size and they'll become bigger and bigger. But if there's nothing around, they'll actually slowly start shrinking, eventually disappearing completely. But more importantly, all of these discoveries will hopefully lead us to the final question of the theory of everything, trying to connect gravity to the standard model of particle physics. At the moment, we're still not there yet, but because of these discoveries, similar to what we found in this paper, it slowly takes us closer and closer to finally finding all of these answers and finally being able to explain everything around us using a beautiful set of mathematical formula that unfortunately do not exist just yet. And so it's a pretty cool discovery, something that will hopefully get experimentally confirmed in some of the future studies, but until then, well, I guess we'll just see what scientists discover in some of the future studies.
And so until then, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.